Hello students. So students, so far we have discussed the multiple choice questions from the first two chapters like some basic concepts of chemistry. We solved so many problems, we understood so many concepts in it and also structure of atom. Now in these subsequent videos we will solve some MCQs from the next chapter that is the third chapter and the chapter is called as classification of elements and periodicity in properties okay it is one of the most uh, simple chapter but yet it is the most fundamental chapter for all other chapters of uh, chemistry so all the inorganic chapters of first year as well as second year stands on this one simple chapter okay what is this chapter called as yeah classification of elements and periodicity in properties before we go ahead with the multiple choice questions let us list out the different concepts that we have to understand we have to be thorough so that we can easily solve mcqs on this chapter hope you remember what are the different concepts wherein you have to you know, stress a lot okay yeah which are those different concepts okay the different concepts involves the first concept is okay yeah history of the periodic table history of periodic table yes so here we we gather a lot of information okay now if we have to understand how the concept of okay periodic table originated okay so here please stress on okay yeah yes what is it john alexander law of octaves isn't it newland's law of octaves dobernier's law of triads mendeleev's periodic table etc so the first thing please understand dobernier's dobernier's law of triads okay yes next one john alexander's newland law of octaves john alexander's newland law of newlands john alexander newlands law of octaves law of octaves john alexander newland's law of octaves then comes the most important part of the periodic table you know what is that that is mendeleev's mendeleev's periodic table okay mendeleev's periodic table please okay please stress upon merits and demerits of mendeleev's periodic table because you can expect questions on this concept what is it merits and demerits of mendeleev's periodic table okay yeah he stated a law called as periodic law please understand what exactly periodic law is okay please understand periodic law after mendeleev's periodic table we go with modern periodic law modern periodic law as stated by okay what is that henry mosley henry mosley okay you have to understand the significance of henry mosley's experiment on the structure of atom okay please understand so he was a you know, person who stated modern periodic law henry mosley henry mosley so after this okay uh, please understand okay the characteristic features of characteristic characteristic features features of 
ओके मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक टेबल ओके मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक टेबल लुक एट लुक एट हियर दिस इज मेंडेलिव पीरियोडिक टेबल विल यूज दिस I'll explain what the different features of this when I solve the multiple choice questions on Mendeleev's periodic table. Don't worry, this is Mendeleev's periodic table. Okay. After this, this is the modern periodic table. Okay. Modern periodic table, wherein the elements are arranged in the increasing order of what atomic number. Okay. The elements are arranged in the increasing order of atomic number. okay isn't it this is modern periodic table okay this is mendeleev's periodic table yeah we'll go ahead with this later okay yes so please understand the characteristic features of this modern periodic table you should be know you should be having idea about uh, periods okay and groups how many groups how many periods what is the group number okay indicate what is a period number indicate how many okay elements are present in different groups how many elements are present in different periods etc etc so you should understand the characteristic features of modern periodic table so many aspects okay so after all of this okay we know uh, we have classified this modern periodic table into four blocks which are those okay they are s yes, block is it correct okay from here to here what is it p block is it correct and then from this one as d block okay and what is this this is f block f block so just understand the general characteristic features of s block elements p block elements d block elements and f block elements okay please emphasize on the general characteristic properties of s block p block d block and f block elements f block elements so after all of this now comes the most important concept what is it trends in physical properties and trends in what chemical properties trends in physical properties and trends in chemical properties okay so trends in physical properties trends in physical properties when you come across the trends in physical properties okay what are the different trends that you will study okay the different trends in physical properties that is there in our ncert textbook okay yeah we have got five different uh, trends in physical properties one is atomic radius atomic radius the next one is ionic radius ionic radius next come on what is it ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy okay electron gain enthalpy electron gain enthalpy electron gain enthalpy and the last is what okay it is uh, electronegativity electro negativity okay electro negativity so we have got five trends in physical properties that is atomic radius ionic radius ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy and electro negativity when you go for atomic radius please make sure you have learned about okay yeah covalent radius covalent radius okay metallic radius metallic radius and van der waals radius van der waals radius okay so make sure 
you learn the comparison of these three atomic radius covalent radius metallic radius and van der waals radius okay yes and when you go with ionic radius please talk about okay the size of or the radius of okay cation and anion and how to compare the size of cation and anion with the parent atom etc ionization enthalpy okay so you should learn how this uh, okay how these different uh, physical properties vary along the period and uh, down the group you should learn okay you should be knowing how the different okay how the different yes uh, okay how the different uh, physical properties like atomic radius ionic radius ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy and electron negativity vary along the period and down the group okay so you should learn all those things see along with this okay along with these uh, physical properties please also okay also learn the variation of metallic character metallic character and non metallic character metallic character and non metallic character okay how does metallic character and non metallic character vary along the period and down the group and also melting point and boiling point okay how does the melting point and the boiling point of the elements vary along the period and down the group okay and after all of this after the trends of all this physical properties okay you should be knowing something called as anomalous behavior of second period elements okay anomalous behavior of second period elements having learned all these things okay you should learn anomalous behavior behavior of second period elements anomalous behavior of second period elements second period elements in the sense okay lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon so you should be knowing okay the okay anomalous behavior of lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen and fluorine that is what we call anomalous behavior of second period elements and lastly please have a quick look of what diagonal relationship diagonal relationship okay yes diagonal relationship okay which are the elements that show diagonal relationship lithium shows diagonal relationship with what magnesium beryllium shows diagonal relationship with aluminium boron shows diagonal relationship with silicon okay so diagonal relationship is exhibited only by these elements lithium shows diagonal relationship with magnesium beryllium will show a diagonal relationship with aluminium and boron shows diagonal relationship with silicon silicon okay so learn about diagonal relationship also so if you have learned all this concepts so well then solving the mcqs on this chapter will be very easy and okay uh, now we can easily solve the mcqs with uh, very less time see okay whenever you are solving neat problems of physical chemistry you require more time because you have to solve the problem but okay if you are when you are solving the neat mcqs on inorganic chemistry particularly these chapters okay now they are all less time consuming because if you know the concept you can go aram se okay if you know if you go you know you don't have to use a formula you have to don't have to calculate nothing okay if you know the concept it is just like yes or no question that's it it is the questions on all these simple chapters will be just like yes or no questions you can aram se okay attend the mcqs okay and it is the you know mcqs on this chapter are less time consuming less time consuming okay so avoid okay using much time on these simple chapters 
to utilize the same time for other chapters wherein okay you know you need to solve problems and you need to okay use so many concepts so for them you use the time but for these chapters okay you can okay avoid consuming much time understood so now with this basic idea shall we start solving the mcqs on this chapter yes come on let's do it yeah okay so i'll take up the first question yes i'll take the first question and the first question is like this an element p has atomic number 56 what will be the formula of its halide okay an element p has atomic number 56 okay what would be the formula of the allied okay what is the formula of its allied is it px px2 px3 or p2 x3 p2 x3 understood okay shall we solve this yeah an element p okay has atomic number okay which is this element with atomic number 56 it is actually barium barium is the element with atomic number 56 i hope you can see this look at here barium the atomic number of barium is 56 forget it if you don't know that it's barium no problem then also we can solve this problem no issues okay so if you have given with atomic number just write the electronic configuration of this okay what is the electronic configuration look here if the atomic number i don't know which element is it let me take it as okay he is telling it's p okay and what is the atomic number of this element it's 56 let us write its electronic configuration what will be its electronic configuration 1s2 yes 2s2 yes 2p6 3s2 3p6 okay yes 4s2 then 3d10 okay 4s2 3d10 okay then 4p6 4p 6 ah what next 5s2 is it correct okay 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 okay 4s2 3d10 4p6 ah okay and then how much 10 20 30 okay yeah 38 after 5s2 you know right energy level diagram 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p okay 3d yes 4s 4p 4d 4f okay 5s 5p okay 5d 5f then 6s 6p 6d 6f 7s 7p 7d 7f okay so it goes like this 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 4s 3d 4p 5s after 5s it is 4d 5p 6s yeah 4d 4d 10 yeah 5p 6 okay 5p 6 and then 6s2 now just count okay are we satisfied with uh, 56 look at here 10 20 30 40 yes 50 56 yes that's correct so we have this okay we have the electronic configuration of the element with atomic number 56 okay now look at the valence electronic configuration of this element what is the valence electronic configuration of this element it is 6s2 isn't it 6s2 see if this element p if it can lose the two electrons if it can lose the two electrons it can attain the nearest noble gas configuration is it correct 5s2 5p6 is that is that it or not yes okay so if for now if this element can lose two electrons if this element will lose two electrons okay it can attain its nearest noble gas configuration therefore what is the valency of this okay element the valency of this element is 2 because it can lose two electrons it has to lose two electrons only upon losing two electron it can attain the nearest noble gas configuration hence the valency of this element is plus two and how about allied halides for example fluoride chloride bromide iodide you should remember okay so if you take an any halide for example okay say for example chloride atomic number is 
17. What is its electronic configuration? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, okay, 3s2, 3p5. Observe the you know, electronic configuration of chlorine. Observe the valence electronic configuration. It is 3s2, 3p5. Now, if chlorine accepts one electron, if chlorine accepts one electron, it will att attain the nearest noble gas configuration. Isn't it? So, like that, any halogen. If it accepts one electron, it will attain the nearest noble gas configuration. So, what is what will be the valency of halogens? It's going to be minus one. Okay, the valency of halogens is going to be what? Minus one. Now, you have to derive the formula of the halide formed between the element P and X. Okay, what is the? How do you write the formula? Okay, how to write the formula? Okay, just you know interchange, cross multiply the valencies. That's it. You have to just cross multiply the valencies. So if you cross multiply the valencies, what is that you will be getting? P1 x2 or simply P x2. P x2. Understood? Do we have the answer? Yes. So what is the formula of the halide formed between the F element P with atomic number 56 and an halide? It is P x2. Because the valency of the element P is plus 2 and the valency of the halogens will be minus 1. So cross multiply the valencies, you will be getting P x2. Hence the correct answer is going to be what? P x2. It's option B. Option B. Understood? Simple. Okay. That's great. Yeah. We'll go with the next question students. Yes. Next question, please. The next question says, the period to which an element belongs to the long form of periodic table represents a very important question. Okay. The period to which an element belongs in the long to the long form of periodic table represents what? Okay. That means he's talking about, okay, what does period number indicate? What does a period number indicate? Okay, just uh, look at here. The question is like this. The period to which an element belongs to the long form of periodic table represents what? That means, okay, what does the period number indicates? Period number indicates. Okay, now let us go back to the periodic table. Let us say, select uh, any element. Say, okay, yes. Uh, well, if I take up sodium. Okay, sodium belongs to which period? See, hydrogen and helium, this is first period, first period, okay. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon is second period. These are second period elements, okay. Altogether, how many periods are there? Yes, totally seven periods, isn't it? Okay, yes. So, fifth period, okay, fifth period, then sixth period, and then seventh period okay you should remember that first period has uh, two elements first period has two elements okay second period has eight elements eight elements the third pair also has eight elements yes fourth period has okay 18 elements fifth period will have 18 elements Okay, seven, sixth period has 32 elements and seventh period is incomplete. Okay, seventh period is what? Incomplete. So the first period has two elements, second period has eight elements, the third period also has eight elements. You can just count. Okay, just count. Okay, so first period has how many elements? Two elements, second period eight, third period eight, fourth period 18, 18, 32 and incomplete. Now, what was the question? Please recall the question. What is the question? The question says, period number indicates what? Okay. Now, let us select any uh, element. Say, I had selected sodium. Okay. What is the atomic number of sodium? Yeah. Atomic number of sodium is 11. What is its electronic configuration? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now, look at here. Okay. Sodium belongs to third period. Why sodium belongs to third period? Why sodium belongs to third period? Because, okay, the valence configuration, okay, yeah, the, no, for the valency shell, for the valency shell, which is the valency shell, okay, what do you mean by valency shell? The outermost shell is called as the valency shell, isn't it? Okay, so for the valency shell, the principal quantum number value is 3, isn't it? 
correct okay for the valency shell for the outermost shell okay for the last shell the principal quantum number is 3 hence sodium belongs to which group sorry which period it belongs to third period it belongs to third period like that you take any element you take any element for example okay if i take uh, yeah uh, if i take phosphorus for that matter no no let us go for any element okay it might be yeah uh, let us take bromine okay let us see to which okay period it belongs to what is the atomic number of bayona bromine it's 35 isn't it bromine it's 35 what is its electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 yeah come on 4s2 4p5 is that correct okay 3s2 3p6 sorry okay 3s2 yeah 3p6 4s2 okay 3d10 okay then how much yeah 4p5 4p5 okay yes now which is the outermost shell this is the outermost shell that is the valency shell for the valency shell principal quantum number is 4 isn't it for the valency shell the principal quantum number is 4 therefore bromine belongs to which period just look at here bromine belongs to which period it belongs to fourth period bromine belongs to fourth period because okay it's well enough for its valency shell the principal quantum number is okay four hence bromine belongs to okay fourth period that means period number indicates what period number indicates the principal quantum number of the outermost shell is it correct of the outermost shell or it indicates the principal quantum number of the valency shell isn't it yes okay so okay so at now sodium the valency for the valency shell the principal quantum number is 3 hence its period number is also 3 okay for bromine okay the principal quantum number of the valency shell is 4 therefore its period number is also 4 hence I can conclude that principal quantum number indicates okay sorry a period number indicates the principal quantum number of the valency shell is that correct yes so let us answer that question the period to which an element belongs to the long form of the periodic table represents what principal quantum number of okay valency shell okay of what valency shell is that correct yes the period to which an element belongs to the long form of periodic table represents the principal quantum number of valency shell okay i hope this is clear now any doubts okay yes now let us go with the next question okay yes which of the following elements show okay lowest ionization enthalpy okay which of the following elements show lowest ionization enthalpy okay what do you mean by ionization enthalpy first of all okay yes ionization enthalpy okay the question is which group of elements show lowest ionization enthalpy by the way what is ionization enthalpy we know ionization enthalpy is the amount of energy required to remove an outermost electron from a okay from a gaseous ground state isolated atom is it correct yes okay say for example if i take uh, any example for example okay same i'll go with uh, okay sodium okay yes now if i have to remove okay what is its electronic configuration atomic number is 11 what is its electronic configuration it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 now okay what is the amount of energy required to remove this outermost electron from okay an isolated gaseous ground state atom is called as what ionization enthalpy so if i give if i supply energy to sodium it will lose one electron and it forms na plus so how much of energy is required okay how much of energy should be supplied to sodium so that we can remove the outermost electron from an isolated gaseous ground state atom is what i call ionization enthalpy yes okay by the way how does ionization enthalpy vary along the period and down the group huh? how does ionization enthalpy vary along the period and down the group yes 
along the period along the period okay and down the group along the period and down the group okay yes so along the period we know ionization enthalpy increases ionization enthalpy increases and down the group ionization enthalpy decreases please remember this point okay so along the period ionization enthalpy increases down the group ionization enthalpy decreases that means okay so if i go from hydrogen to helium ionization enthalpy increases so if i go from lithium to beryllium beryllium to boron boron to carbon carbon to nitrogen nitrogen to oxygen oxygen to fluorine okay what is going to happen to the ionization enthalpy so if you go from okay yeah lithium to beryllium then beryllium to boron boron to carbon carbon to nitrogen Oxygen, oxygen then fluorine so if you go along the period ionization enthalpy will increase will increase that means okay so uh, okay yes it increases along the period down the group ionization enthalpy yes that means if you go from lithium to sodium sodium to potassium potassium to rubidium rubidium to cesium cesium to francium what will happen okay so as we go down the group ionization enthalpy decreases but along the period ionization enthalpy increases students okay try to understand if ionization enthalpy increases from okay uh, now along the period okay so if you go from okay this group to this group increases now from this group to this group increases from here to here increases here to here increases here to here it increases and here to here it increases so as we move from here to here ionization enthalpy is increasing that means which okay group of elements has least ionization enthalpy don't you think it will be the first group okay they have the least ionization enthalpy because okay what is happening to ionization enthalpy along the period it is increasing it is increasing so as we move, move as we are moving from left to right it is increasing therefore it should be least at the okay it should be least at the extreme left okay that means for which elements ionization enthalpy is least of course it is alkali metals for which group of elements ionization enthalpy is maximum it is noble gases okay so ionization enthalpy is maximum for noble gases the next comes is halogen family okay halogen family okay for halogen family also ionization enthalpy will be very 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 high extremely high understood okay and now, now next to noble gases which group of elements have highest ionization enthalpy it's going to be halogens and which group of elements has least ionization enthalpy obviously it's going to be alkali metals alkali metals okay yes are we clear with this yes so can we answer this question okay i think this question isn't it so which group of elements show lowest ionization enthalpy yeah of course it's going to be alkali metals okay halogens and noble gases will have extremely high ionization enthalpy for noble gases ionization enthalpy is extremely high next to noble gases it's going to be halogens but which group of elements is has least ionization enthalpy it's going to be alkali metals alkali metals okay hope you have understood yeah we shall go with the next question yes mm. okay ionic radius in a group while moving down okay ionic radius in a group while moving down remains same from top to bottom okay will the ionic radius remain same from top to bottom or it decreases from top to bottom or it increases from top to bottom increases and then decreases okay say okay see you have one thing you should understand ionic radius okay ionic radius and atomic radius ionic radius and atomic radius okay they follow follow same trend okay ionic radius and atomic radius follow what same trend okay in the variation of along the period and down the group so how do they vary along the period along the period how does ionization enthalpy uh, sorry atomic radius and ionic radius vary along the period 
and down the group down the group so we know that along the period both atomic radius as well as ionic radius along the period decreases decreases whereas down the group atomic radius and ionic radius yeah increases increases okay so down the group means from top to bottom along the period means from left to right left to right okay so ionic radius in a group while moving down okay remains the same from top to bottom no decreases from top to bottom no along the period move no sorry down now down the group down the group as we move down the group what happens to atomic radius sorry and ionic radius it it should increase it should increase so what is the correct answer for this then it is option c so ionic radius in a group while moving down increases from top to bottom increases from top to bottom okay i hope it is clear simple yes very good okay next question ah yes next question understand the next question the question says as we move from left to right as we move from left to right the electronegativity increases an atom which is highly electronegative has large size low electron affinity high ionization enthalpy and low chemical reactivity okay so as we understand the question carefully okay understand the question carefully yes so as we move from left to right the electronegativity increases yes electronegativity increases from left to right an atom which is highly electronegative has okay will it has large size low electron affinity high ionization enthalpy or low chemical reactivity low chemical reactivity understand one thing okay yes understand one thing electronegativity electro negativity negativity is directly proportional to effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge okay electro negativity is directly proportional to effective nuclear charge so if the effective nuclear what do you mean by effective nuclear charge ah what is effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge means it is the force of attraction force of attraction force of attraction between the nucleus between the nucleus and the electrons and the electrons that's it it is the force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons we know nucleus will be pulling the electrons towards itself the force with which the nucleus pulls the electrons towards itself is called as effective nuclear charge okay so if effective nuclear charge is more then electronegativity will be more by the way what is electronegativity what is electronegativity yes what is electronegativity it is the tendency of an element it is the tendency of an atom or an element yeah it is the tendency of an element to attract to attract okay the shared pair of electrons the shared pair of electrons pair of electrons towards itself okay the tendency of an element to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself is called as electronegativity am i correct yes so if i have an element x the tendency to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself okay so the tendency to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself is called as electronegativity electronegativity so if uh, no if uh, no if the element has higher effective nuclear charge then it will easily attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself therefore its electronegativity is going to be more okay so lesser the effective nuclear charge okay lesser will be the electronegativity understood and also you should remember that yes you should also remember that okay electronegativity is inversely proportional to atomic size electronegativity electro negativity is inversely proportional to 
atomic size atomic size atomic size are you getting my point electronegativity is inversely proportional to atomic size yes okay so lesser the atomic size more will be the electronegativity please understand this point electronegativity is inversely proportional to what atomic size lesser the atomic size more will be the electronegativity this is how the idea is so electronegativity is directly proportional to effective nuclear charge okay electronegativity is inversely proportional to atomic size now please read the question carefully what is the question that is telling us okay as we move from left to right the electronegativity increases so electronegativity has increased means effective nuclear charge has also increased and atomic size has decreased isn't it okay so if the electron negativity has increased so the, that is what the question is telling so as we move from left to right the electron negativity increases if the electron negativity increases according to these relations okay effective nuclear charge will also increase but the atomic size atomic size decreases okay now an atom which is highly electronegative will have okay if an atom is highly electronegative then it has then it will have high effective nuclear charge and least atomic size isn't it okay correct so if the atom is a highly electronegative according to these two relations can i say that if it is highly electronegative okay it will have high effective nuclear charge and less atomic size is that correct okay therefore so if an atom is highly electronegative then it should have least atomic size therefore option a cannot be the answer okay yes and remember one thing more okay so if okay electron negativity is more okay chemical reactivity will be more chemical reactivity is going to be more okay that means okay highly electronegative elements are highly chemically reactive they are more chemically reactive okay for example halogens fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine okay all are highly electronegative elements they are also highly reactive elements highly reactive elements so highly electronegative elements are also highly reactive elements therefore okay option d also cannot be the answer option d also cannot be the answer okay so because highly electronegative elements will be highly you know reactive reactive so highly electronegative elements should have least atomic size and highly electronegative atom should be highly reactive so contrary to that option a and option d are not the correct answer then we should no go with option b and option c okay we know along the period ionization enthalpy also increases is that correct okay along the period Period. look here okay let, let me write it here along along the period please note this point along the period okay ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy increases okay electron gain enthalpy increases electronegativity increases all the three will increase so an element which is highly electronegative an element which is highly electronegative will be will have high ionization enthalpy and it will have high electron gain enthalpy isn't it okay are you getting my point because along the period along the period ionization enthalpy increases okay effect you know electron gain enthalpy increases electronegativity also increases so if the atom is highly electronegative then it should have high ionization enthalpy and it should have high electron gain enthalpy is that correct so an atom which is highly electronegative has low electron gain enthalpy no if the atom is highly electronegative it should have high electron gain enthalpy therefore option b also cannot be the correct answer hence an atom which is highly electronegative has high ionization enthalpy is that correct okay if the element if the atom is highly electronegative then it should be have high ionization enthalpy so the correct answer for this question is going to be option c option c i hope you have understood this that's great okay so shall we move on to the next question yeah yes please read out the next question The next question says okay of the metals we have beryllium magnesium 
calcium, strontium. Okay, even though if they are not given, I can also quote barium and radium, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radi radium. Okay, well, uh, what are these elements? Basically, these elements belong to which group? Yeah, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium belongs to which group? Second group elements. They are basically second group elements. And we know second group elements are called as what? Alkaline earth metals. They are alkaline earth metals. Okay. They are alkaline earth metals. So second, first group elements are called as alkali metals. Second group elements are called as alkaline earth metals. Which are the different alkaline earth metals? Yeah, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium. Alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. They are alkali metals. Now, these set of elements that are given, beryllium, magnesium, calcium and strontium, they are basically what? Alkaline earth metals. We know alkali metals, alkali metals okay and alkaline earth metals alkaline earth metals okay they have okay low ionization enthalpy is it correct alkali metals and alkaline earth metals have low ionization enthalpy they have low ionization enthalpy that's good okay so these these elements they might be alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Let me also write alkali metals that is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Okay. These are alkali metals. Okay. Well, remember since alkali metals and alkaline earth metals have low ionization enthalpy, they all will form, they all form ionic compounds. They all will form what? ionic compounds ionic compounds okay not covalent compounds just like sodium chloride sodium chloride is an ionic compound isn't it na plus cl minus calcium carbonate is an ionic compound ca2 plus co3 2 minus so these alkali metals and alkaline earth metals they form ionic compounds but there is an exception which is the exception lithium and beryllium are the exceptions because lithium and beryllium okay element these two elements they form covalent compounds they form what covalent compounds rather than ionic compounds okay this is what we call okay anomalous behavior of lithium and anomalous behavior of beryllium see please note this Okay, all alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, since they have low ionization enthalpy, okay, since they have high atomic size, okay, they should form ionic compounds. But there is an exception. What is that exception? Lithium and beryllium are the exceptions wherein they don't form ionic compounds, they form covalent compounds. Okay, covalent compounds which you study that in, okay, yeah, uh, what is that? Anomalous behavior of lithium and anomalous behavior of beryllium. Okay, now the question is of the follow of the metals beryllium magnesium calcium strontium the least ionic chloride the least ionic chloride okay which is the least ionic chloride is it not don't you think it is beryllium beryllium chloride yes beryllium beryllium chloride is least ionic beryllium chloride is least ionic we can also explain this on the basis of fargens rule fargens rule okay yes okay using fargens rule also we can explain why beryllium chloride is least ionic well we will study about fargens rule in the next chapter called as coordination sorry chemical bonding and molecular structure according to fargens rule smaller the size of cation larger the size of anion more will be the covalent character less will be the ionic character so here okay beryllium ion b2 plus Okay, magnesium ion Mg2 plus, calcium ion Ca2 plus, strontium ion Sr2 plus. Okay, as we go down the group, ionic radius increases. 
that means which is the smallest cation beryllium is the smallest cation smaller the size of cation larger the size of anion more will be the covalent character according to which role fajan's role hence okay beryllium chloride is covalent rather than being what ionic in nature rather than being ionic okay is that simple yes let us move on to the next question yeah the next question says which of the following is not a periodic properties of the elements okay which are the different periodic properties of elements students periodic properties okay which are the periodic properties we have already quoted okay atomic radii is a periodic property ionic radii is a periodic property ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy electron affinity metallic character non metallic character melting point boiling point their chemical reactivity these are all the different periodic properties of an element okay yes now but the question is which of the following is not a periodic property of the element electronegativity is a periodic property atomic size or ionic size they are the periodic property ionization energy is also a periodic property of an element occurrence in nature no it is not the periodic property of an element so only periodic properties are atomic size ionic size okay ionization enthalpy okay electron gain enthalpy electronegativity metallic character non metallic character okay and what else yeah melting point boiling point reactivity etc etc okay but occurrence in nature is not the chemical property sorry it's not a periodic property of an element yes that's good okay next question predict the formula of the compound formed by aluminum and sulfur okay predict the formula of the compound formed by aluminum and sulfur students okay what is the atomic number of aluminum yes okay we know atomic number of aluminum is 13 is that correct yeah okay what is its electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 is it correct now understand this see if aluminum can lose these three electrons if aluminum can lose these three electrons then don't you think it will attain nearest noble gas configuration is it correct okay if aluminum can lose three electrons it can attain the nearest noble gas configuration okay so therefore aluminum upon losing three electrons it will form al3 plus so what is the valency of aluminum it is plus three okay three understood correct yeah okay the valency of aluminum is three how about sulfur what is the atomic number of sulfur come on okay yes atomic number of sulfur is 16 what's its electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 okay 3p4 is it correct 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 correct 16 now don't you think sulfur if it can accept two electrons if it can accept two electrons it will attain nearest noble gas configuration yes okay so aluminium on losing through three electrons it will attain nearest noble gas configuration sulfur on gaining two electrons it will attain nearest noble gas configuration so what is the valency of sulfur it's two so aluminium valency of aluminium is three alumina valency of sulfur is going to be two so how do you write the formula of uh, okay the compound that is formed between al and s so you just have to cross multiply you have to cross multiply so what will be the formula of aluminium sulfide it's going to be al2s3 is that correct the formula of the compound is going to be what al2s3 so what is the answer the answer is option c excellent is that simple the option is okay c al2s3 that's good yeah next question we'll move with the next question the order of screening effect of electrons of s p d and f orbitals are okay the order of screening effect okay the order of screening effect of electrons of s p d and f orbitals by the way what is screening effect or shielding effect yeah okay what is screening effect screening effect 
और शील्डिंग इफेक्ट स्क्रीनिंग इफेक्ट और शील्डिंग इफेक्ट वॉट यू मीन बाई स्क्रीनिंग इफेक्ट और शील्डिंग इफेक्ट लुक यर यस सी इफ आई हैव अ न्यूक्लियस ओके वी नो द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एन आइडम इज एन एट ओके सो इफ दिस इज द न्यूक्लियस वी नो न्यूक्लियस कंसिस ऑफ प्रोटोन्स एंड न्यूट्रॉन्स इज एंड ओके द न्यूक्लियस कंसिस ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स एंड न्यूट्रॉन्स एंड वॉट इज द चार्ज ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस इट्स पॉजिटिव चार्ज इज करेक्ट एंड द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड द न्यूक्लियस लाइक दिस इज दैट करेक्ट या ओके सो नाउ ओके सी दिस वॉट यू मीन बाई स्क्रीनिंग इफेक्ट और ओके यस शील्डिंग इफेक्ट वॉट यू मीन बाई स्क्रीनिंग इफेक्ट और शील्डिंग इफेक्ट सी इफ ओके द इनर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ओके इफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द इनर ऑर्बिटल्स द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द इनर ऑर्बिटल्स विल कवर द आउटर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम द न्यूक्लियर पुल इज एन एट आई हेव टोल्ड यू लॉन्ग बैक ओके न्यूक्लियस विल बी पुलिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टूवर्ड्स इट सेल्फ वाई बिकॉज न्यूक्लियस इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर नेगेटिवली चार्ज सो दिस न्यूक्लियस विल पुल विल बी पुलिंग द न्यूक्नो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टूवर्ड्स इट सेल्फ न्यूक्लियस विल बी पुलिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टूवर्ड्स इट सेल्फ विल बी अट्रैक्टिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टूवर्ड्स इट सेल्फ okay because of opposite charges so this nucleus will be pulling these electrons towards itself this it will be pulling these electrons towards itself and it will be pulling these electrons towards itself now what is going to happen the electrons in the inner orbital the electrons in the inner orbital will cover the outer electrons will will mask the outer electrons okay the electrons in the inner orbitals will cover the outer electrons from the nuclear pull as a result as a result the you know force of attraction on these electrons will be less why because these electrons in the inner orbital they are covering the outer electrons as a result nucleus cannot detect these outer electrons hence the force of attraction will be very less okay so this is what we call the shielding effect okay or screening effect the electrons in the inner orbitals are shielding the outer electrons they are shielding the outer electrons they are covering the outer electrons they are masking the outer electrons from what from the nuclear force of attraction this is called as screening effect or shielding effect okay you should understand one thing okay screening effect of electrons will be more if the electrons are in s orbital than p orbital than d orbital and than f orbital that means okay the screening effect or the shielding effect will be less for those electrons which are in d orbital and f orbital but the okay if the electrons are in inner s orbital or inner p, p orbital the shielding effect is going to be more okay please remember that okay d the electrons in inner d orbital or the electrons in inner f orbital will exhibit poor shielding poor shielding effect they exhibit poor shielding effect and okay the electrons in the inner s orbital and p orbital will experience will exhibit maximum shielding effect maximum shielding maximum shielding effect okay yes clear yes so what is shielding effect or screening effect the electrons in the inner orbitals will shield the outer electrons will cover the outer electrons from the nuclear force of attraction this phenomena is called as shielding effect or screening effect and what is the order of shielding effect or screening effect okay screening effect is more in case of s orbital than p orbital than d orbital and then f orbital so what is the correct order it's option a option a understood is that simple okay yes that's exactly correct okay yeah next question we shall go with the next question okay which of the following is not an actinoid yes students let us go back to the periodic table okay yes let us go back to the periodic table okay yes so understand this periodic table we know these two group of elements are called as what s block okay these group of elements are called as what d block and this is what p block 
yes p block so we have set of two series of elements which are placed at the bottom of the periodic table so what are these set of uh, elements called as these set of elements are called as what f block elements and in f block we have two series okay so one series of 14 elements from lanthanum to lutetium and the other series is okay set of 14 elements from actinium to laurentium so these set of 14 elements okay they are called as what actinoids they are called as actinoids and okay these set of 14 elements from lutetium actinium to laurentium they are called as okay actinoids sorry sorry this is called as lanthanoids okay lanthanoids whereas this is called as what actinoids okay yes from lanthanum to lutetium lanthanides from actinium to laurentium it is actinoids and you should remember that lactinoids starts from atomic number 89 lanthanoid starts from atomic number 57 57 now go back to the same question what is the question okay so which of the following is not an actinoid yes yeah i told you that actinoids starts from atomic number 89 and goes further so therefore curium is an actinoid californium is an actinoid urium is uranium is also an actinoid but terbium is not an actinoid therefore it is a lanthanoid it's not an actinoid so what is the correct answer it's option d okay yes